As a woodworker and an instrument builder, I use the design process all the time. Creating anything is a combination of inspiration and problem solving activities. Mistakes are part of the game. According to the second grade science book, there are five steps in the design process, including finding a problem, planning and building, testing and improving, redesigning as needed, and communicating the results, which is this video. Last year, I picked up some woodworking jigs from a luthier in Crystal River. A luthier is someone who builds musical instruments. Since 1976, I've been building instruments called Appalachian dulcimers. One of the homemade jigs in the collection, which really interested me, was this machine. It's used to bend the sides for a guitar. Well, I'd never seen anything like it. I always used steam to bend the sides before clamping them into place while the glue dried. And so I thought, hmm, I know that a woodworking jig is a tool to make a job easier. I need to research how this one works. So I googled guitar side bending and found a similar machine with a description of how to use it. When the time came to bend the sides for the dulcimer I was working on, I tried it. I was impressed as how quickly it worked, even though it wasn't the right shape and I had to steam it anyway. After all, a guitar is not a dulcimer. And then I thought, Hmm, I can use the basic design of this guitar jig and decide something that I can use. Well, my research only found a couple of videos about bending jigs for dulcimers. Hmm, this one was a little too complex. This one was closer to something that I thought might work. The original jig has a heating box with clamps and springs and a separate form with aluminum tubes that's placed on top of the box. This way, the same heat source can be used for different guitar shapes. So, I compared the form that I had and the form I needed to make. I could still use aluminum tubes from the original jig. If I built a longer heating box, I could build different forms for different dulcimer shapes. I made some measurements, figured out the shape of the heating box, and test fit the pieces. The original jig used 350 watt light bulbs for heat. I decided that I'd use four bulbs since this box is going to be longer. I bought the stuff that I needed, including half inch plywood, light receptacles, and an extra bulb. Most everything else was scrap material hanging around the shop. I evenly spaced the light bulb receptacles on the base and drilled the holes for the wiring. After covering the base with aluminum foil and aluminum tape, I attached the receptacles and wired them together. They worked, and yep, there was heat. I used aluminum foil all over all the parts that would get hot, assembled the box together, and tack down my wiring underneath. Used most of my plywood sheet to build the box and had just enough left for the form. I divided this panel exactly in half, so I had to use math to determine the halfway point. Here are the two halves, perfectly cut. I then marked the shape of the sides using my original template for the hourglass dulcimer. I cut out the shape with a bandsaw, but not all the way to the mark. The next problem to solve is making sure the shapes are exactly the same size. To solve this, I clamped the pieces together and sanded them to the pencil line. Then it was time to install the aluminum tubes. How far apart should they be? Hmm. I removed the 15 tubes from the guitar form and set them up carefully to determine what looked like the right distance apart. So I marked then where each one was placed. With the pieces still clamped together, I drilled a half inch holes at the marked intervals with a drill press. 
I added braces onto the forms to hold them six inches apart and make them rigid. I needed 23 tubes and I only had 15, so I cut up some more. I then installed the tubes into the holes and added a grill thermometer to keep track of the temperature. You can see the similarities to the original jig along with the modifications that were made. The only thing left to do now was to install the hardware and springs. I filmed most of what I needed from Ace Hardware. I'm reusing the wooden clamps from the guitar jig. I just needed to install the eye bolts so the springs would provide enough tension. I wasn't happy with the length of the middle clamps, so I replaced them with long eye bolts and wing nuts. At this point, the project is basically complete. This is what it will look like with the side pieces sandwiched between metal plates and clamped down on the form. I was concerned about the amount of heat that would be generated during the bending process, so I tested it by plugging it in and firing it up. After 15 minutes, the metal was too hot to touch and the thermometer registered 125 degrees. It didn't go much higher than that over the next five minutes. That'll be fine. So, there is my completed dulcimer side bending jig. Now, to try it out, I decided to enlist the help of my second graders to bend the first sides. This is, this is the first time that this has been used. This, you guys get to be part of the very first test of this. I have not tested this yet because I just got to this point in my dulcimer building that uh, I will show you right here. It is time for the side pieces. This is a dulcimer that I have under construction right now. So what we need are the sides for this, and that's what we're going to bend right now. 